past the hour. And I'm recording the lecture for the sake of those who might uh, come late, and therefore uh, they're going to find the material uh, after the class has ended. So last week, we were, okay, earlier in the week, we were meant to cover lecture five, which we never finished. I think we were caught up by time. And that is why today I said that uh, we need to finish up this material so that we can, uh, we can move forward now to the material that is supposed to be covered for electromagnetics. And uh, as a recap, we have, we have, we, we discussed uh, in length the concept of del operator. And then we discussed about the gradient of a scalar. So uh, today we are going to, to briefly talk about the remaining concepts. That is the, the core. Of course, there, was, there are some examples that we did uh, last week or on Tuesday. And we very briefly uh, illustrated that. So uh, in case you missed out, you can always uh, look at the example or follow uh, uh, our recording that we uploaded. Sorry. So, so today we are going to start on uh, the concept of uh, divergence. I think I have missed number of, yeah, I think so we're supposed to be starting. Yeah, we are going to be starting on page one or four of the text. And I can get, a, I can see a question that uh, is asking, uh, is coming from Kennedy Kipchilchil, Mary. Where can we access the full notes? And I have said that uh, the, the full notes I have shared on Google Classroom. I have also shared on the, for those who are asking, the, the full notes are available on Google Classroom and you need to, to, roll, to register for the, the, the Google Classroom. For those who are new, I am always sharing this link for the sake of uh, those who might, might not have been attending the, the lecture. I've shared the Google, uh, the Google Classroom on chat. Once you have gone to that link, you need to confirm that you have registered with your student email, like I have registered with my staff email. Once you have done that, it will take you to a, uh, to, a, to a page that looks like this. So you will not have any class. Then you need to come here and say join class. And uh, then you, you click join. The join class, there's a Google code that I have already shared with you. Uh, the, or the class code that I've already shared with you, it is right here. So the, the class code is the one that you enter. Uh, at that point where you are prompted to join the class. So you're supposed to come here, say join class, and enter the class code, and you say join. If you have any error, it is because you have not logged in using your, your student email. So I'm sharing the, the, the class code on uh, chat, again, for the sake of those who have not uh, managed to do that. When you go to the Google Classroom class uh, uh, classwork, you actually see uh, a number of topics. One of them is the lecture recordings, which I have been uploading after every lecture. And number two, you are going to see the lecture notes, the one that uh, Mr. Kip Chilchi is, is asking about. And they are right here. You just need, need to access them from that point. And number three is that you have the recordings, all of them, all the lectures that you have held before, they are right here and they are arranged by the time they were, by the lecture that they were meant to, to cover, and they have been split into multiple short videos so that the maximum video is about 25 minutes or, or thereabout, or 30, and therefore you are going to find all the materials. So for those who have missed before, you are advised to make sure you, you access uh, uh, that material. So having said that, I think we are, have responded to that question. And anytime I respond to your question, uh, confirm on chat that you have heard what I have said. So um, now carrying on, we uh, want to find out what it means to talk about uh, what divergence means. And divergence 
uh, is a concept that is very applicable in uh, electromagnetics and uh, we, it is going to come in very handy. So we first of all try to understand what a divergence of a vector means. So just going very quickly through the notes, we are saying that we have noticed that the net, the net outflow of the flux of a vector field A from a cross surface is obtained from the crossed service integral uh, of A with respect to the service. And uh, we now define the divergence of A as the net outward flow of flux per unit volume over a cross incremental surface. And uh, so I'm not going to go into the vigor of deriving each of those concepts. All we are I'm going to be interested in is how do we represent uh, divergence of a vector. So if you if someone asks you what the divergence, the, 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 this is you say div of A, and A is a vector, but it is best uh, uh, it is best uh, illustrated using the symbol, which is del operator, then dot, and then, then the vector A. And that is how you represent the divergence of a vector. And how do you define divergence of a vector? Uh, the divergence of a vector of A, A at a given point P is the outward flux per unit volume. So what we introduced uh, beyond the flux is is always defined per unit volume. And the video that I described earlier that uh, illustrates the concept of, uh, of divergence, which I have shared on the video, is uh, showing a very clear illustration that, of, of what divergence means. And uh, when you have a volume, and I think this diagram uh, is going to this diagram here is going to illustrate that. Assume that this is a volume. This may not follow the laws of physics, where we are saying that uh, matter will always uh, preserve itself. But assume this is a volume, and if from that volume, from from its center or from that volume, there is some fields uh, or, or vector fields represented by probably E that are coming out of that volume. So we normally say that the rate at which E is coming out per unit volume, per unit volume V, that defines the divergence. In case the volume on the other hand is like absorbing some field that is uh, coming from outside and when it gets inside the, the volume, it gets absorbed or it gets diminished. That means that this volume has a negative divergence. So when it is generating some fields, uh, E, the volume is said to have positive divergence and it, when it is absorbing the the fields, they're coming outside and they're getting inside and then they get consumed, then that volume is said to be having a negative divergence. But if the volume itself is not consuming nor, it's neither consuming nor generating, like the, 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 like the fields are coming from outside and then going on the other side, this is side B and this is side A, the fields are coming from side A and coming out from the volume, inside B, then that uh, volume is said to have a uh, zero divergence. So um, that is purely the, the general illustration of uh, divergence. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the lecture, I have shared some very important videos that illustrate the concepts of divergence in CAD. So um, just going very quickly through the notes, we can say that physically, we may regard the divergence of a vector A at a given point as a measure of how much field diverges. So the, the concept here is diverges or emanates or originates from that point or from that uh, incremental volume. 
I can see Marse in this is saying she can't hear someone assist Marse to uh, fix her issue because I guess everyone else is uh, is comfortable with uh, with uh, with audio. Um, so figure three one five, the one I've just alluded to, shows the divergence of vector field at point P is positive because the vector diverges or spreads out at point P. In 315B, a vector field has negative divergence or convergence at point P. And uh, in C, a vector field has zero divergence at point P. So therefore, the divergence of vector field can also be viewed as simply the limit of field source of source strength per unit volume. So what you normally say, if you are now determining the divergence, we always have to uh, measure it with respect to the volume. So we always say per unit volume. What does that mean? That if there's, there's a volume of a ball, there's a ball or balloon, and you have punctured it at point P, then there is an outward flow of air. And if that balloon has, uh, is as big as, uh, say, one meter cubic, that is a unit volume. If you have another smaller balloon of one centimeter cubic, and this also has uh, have some air, and you have uh, pierced a small hole, and therefore the air is flowing out, then the rate of outward flow of air from this balloon A and this balloon B can only be measured if you equate the volumes uh, to the same unit volume. Then we are going to say the rate of flow, outward flow of air from A over the volume, which is uh, one meter cubic, then you also divide by the, the rate outflow of air per unit volume, uh, which is now in this one centimeter cubic. And therefore, uh, and therefore this uh, unit volume kind of uh, describes the divergence that uh, which which means the outward flow of the volume or, or of the field out of the volume. So I can hear some people are saying they can't hear. Uh, someone confirmed to them that others can hear. When others can hear, it definitely a problem on their side. So just someone confirm that you can hear and then we move on quickly so that uh, we do not leave anybody behind. Anybody confirm that you can hear. The audio is okay. Thank you, PDT. So the others need to fix their own problems on their side so that we do not address individual issues that are coming from other people. Anyway, those who can hear, advise them to go to the link that, uh, uh, that I shared that is uh, on YouTube. And therefore, I believe if you can't hear from us uh, from here, you can hear from YouTube. So let me say, give them that link. And uh, I guess you can follow from there. Those who cannot hear, they can definitely follow from, from there. How do I do this? I need to export it to everyone. This thing normally disturbs me. How do you? Put a chat here. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, those who can't hear, they can follow that. Someone advised them that those who can't hear, they can follow from YouTube, and YouTube will be will be okay uh, for them. So uh, I have just uh, was responding to that request that some of people can hear. So we are not going to start deriving. All we are going to is to finish this story that says that the divergence of a vector field can also be viewed as uh, the limit of source length by volume. That is what I explained. It is positive at a point in the field and negative at a, at a sink point. So if the source is generating the field, then the divergence is positive 
And if the point is sinking or absorbing the fields, then the point, uh, the, the vertices is negative, and it is zero if there is neither a sink nor, uh, nor a source. Now, we can derive that in Cartesian coordinates. We don't have to go through that. As you can see through my notes, I've said that you can skip, uh, you can skip, you can skip this. Of course, you can still derive it on your own time. Uh, it all depends with how much uh, time you have or uh, interest in understanding the derivations are. But for us, we are just going to capture what we need to work with, which is uh, this, that in Cartesian coordinate system, the divergence is simply expressed as in cushion 3, 3, 9. And we simply have, if you have A is equals, this is a vector, is equal has X component, the one that you describe like that, it has some Y component that you describe as that, and plus some, the Z component that has the unit, comp the unit vector AX. Then uh, you can simply say that you are diverging, you are multiplying this with, with now that, which you now mean that, uh, I think if you remember what we said that the the, uh, the del operator means, it simply means that it is equals to uh, partial derivative with respect to x along the ax plus partial derivative of with respect to y along ay plus d d z is a z. If you dot if you dot this dot with with this, then it will simply give you. Uh, this equation three three nine. So as a reminder for those who are watching on YouTube uh, live, please uh, include your registration number and names uh, accordingly. So I think that is clear. We don't want to go to put ourselves with the derivation. That is how you express a divergence uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system and. Uh, if now you want to remember, we are always working with three coordinate systems, and therefore the other coordinate system that we need to uh, express divergence is that of uh, symmetrical. And if you remember the divergence in uh, okay the del operator in symmetrical coordinate system, we see that it is given by it is very similar to the, to this, except that uh, the x becomes rho. So d d raw a raw, and then we say we normally introduce a concept of one over raw, and then we say d d phi uh, a phi, then plus d d what d z a z. So this is uh, the one that we have in uh, the radical coordinate system. And therefore, when you introduce, when you introduce uh, the del in cylindrical coordinate system, it actually takes this form. And here, there is something that I just want you to observe very briefly. The only difference that, uh, for me, I normally teach or use the, the concept of uh, patterns. And I've always made sure that my students are able to, to recognize patterns. Because once you are able to recognize patterns, you somehow overcome the challenges of uh, understanding very complex uh, concepts. So if you can remember the, the, this uh, di uh, divergence in the Cartesian system, you can just de de develop a very simple pattern that tells you that everything will follow this, except that we are introducing what I have mentioned, that we normally introduce when you're working with Dell. And now I'm saying that there's something else that we introduce. One overall that gets cancelled inside there. So we, it is like we are multiplying. If you have a factor of D, D law, and you want to do it uh, with the, in the Cartesian, you can simply say that you can introduce one overall here and then introduce the 
did the law and introduced this law here. So in uh, mathematics, this will not change much, except that it is now in the derivations, and when you derive along with that, this would be derived, would be differentiated. And therefore, the concept that I definitely want you to capture is that in the radical coordinate system, we introduce one of our row outside the A row, and then introduce that row inside. And therefore, that works to assist you remember. So if uh, again, uh, again, some of time, sometimes we, um, I think I was mentioning in my notes here that uh, ideally these equations should be provided uh, in case there's a mathematical problem that, that you need to address. In the event that they are not uh, 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 provided, then there is that simple approach that you can always remember. But uh, in an ideal scenario, you should be provided with uh, with this equation. So right now, I don't want you to really bother yourself with uh, deriving them uh, at, at your level. So I have made that clear that we have the, the, the divergence in the theoretical coordinate system. It, is, it has that small difference that, that I have just shown. And uh, I guess that is clear. So, Uh, having said that, I normally wrap my board so that we can uh, have a clearer board, a uh, clearer screen. And now, what is what you are now remaining with is uh, the divergence in the spherical coordinate system. And uh, similar to what we have done in the theoretical, is just to observe how does it change from. How does it change from the from the Cartesian to the uh, to the spherical? So if you remember how we have defined it in the Cartesian, we have said that it is equals to um, d d x a x plus d d y a y plus d d z a z. So the only thing that we are now introducing, which is very similar to the one we have done, is that we are introducing this term, which is one of R squared, and then you introduce the R squared inside there, and therefore becomes pretty easy. And if you remember in radical, we introduced one over, we introduced one over rho, but now in the spherical, we are introducing one over R sine theta. And I, I guess you remember where what sine theta uh, means and uh, of course when we are doing that and now we are also introducing sine theta inside so at the end of the day this sine theta somehow although not exactly cancels out so we are still left similar to the theoretical with one over r and r and rho are um, what we call called or they they represent the same concept and therefore, the, the other con change that we are seeing with the spherical is that we have now one over R sine theta that we never had anywhere. So again, uh, that is uh, how you define the divergence of a vector in spherical coordinate system. So for in case you missed out on anything, uh, the recording should definitely show you uh, the few items that I have mentioned. So uh, as we as we finish, we are just saying that the, the the divergence has some properties that are worth uh, uh, recognizing, and that, that one of them is that when you do divergence of a vector, it gives you a scalar field. So that is what we have, we have already said that happens when you do dot product, and since we said that the del operator is uh, somehow a vector in uh, in quotes, then when you do the divergence with a vector, it gives you a, a scalar. And it follows this idea that if you multiply, if you do divergence of two vectors, then that are added, you can actually get the same result if you do divergence of each uh, individually, and then uh, uh, the results are the, the same. But here, similar to what we, we know in the uh, product law of integration or of, of differentiation, 
these two being uh, one of them being a scalar v is a scalar and a is a, is a vector what we are saying therefore is that it follows this important rule that you could have v a divergence of a plus a divergence of uh, this it now becomes a, a vector because now this becomes a gradient of v so this gradient of v will be said that it generates a vector so now becomes that approach so it is an important property that uh, all we are reminded to remember so that uh, when it comes to dealing with the divergence uh, somehow it works so uh, having said that we we now intended now to we have mentioned or gone through the concepts of divergence divergence of a vector so i want now to differentiate some important concept there is what we deal with as divergence of a vector but on the same side we have divergence theorem which comes from the concepts that we have learned in divergence of a vector and divergence theorem is expressed as in this equation and it is very very simple to remember because again we do not have to go through the divisions which are happening down there all we are saying is that cross service integral of a with respect to service which is a uh, of course a vector is the same as volume integral of divergence of a with respect to volume <clears throat> so uh, i guess that is the simplest way we can state divergence theorem and in words of course uh, in uh, you might also hear this other other term that is used to describe to the divergence theorem which is called gauss or ultra grad sky theorem uh, we really use this term but in case you want to shine among us your peers that you have gone to the university and you know some theorems definitely you can uh, uh, convince them that you have learned some new theorems today uh, but it says in words that the total outward flux of a vector field a through a closed service s is the same as the volume integral of divergence of a so we are just uh, stating we are just stating this equation three four two in what we are saying that the total outward flux of vector field a which would actually be defined by the service into cross service integral is the same as the volume integral of the divergence of a so uh, again uh, that is simply illustrates those two points we are going, we are going to see sufficient to see sufficient examples uh, in this text the division is also going to be there if you want to, to derive you can definitely do that but for us is just to introduce the concept that is very important that of divergence theorem at this point i would like to take a pause so that uh, um i can respond to any comment or concern so this example here would uh, illustrate how you can do uh, divergence it is always with respect to uh, which coordinate system you are working on so and you can always identify the coordinate system by the variables or by the unit vectors that uh, the, the vector field is uh, or has therefore if you are being asked to determine the divergence of these vector fields we can do a very quick one which has actually has been done here without going through so what we need to identify from the from the word go is that this p 
a vector is can be represented as px ax plus py uh, ay unit vector plus pz az and therefore you you pick the px px from the which is the coefficient of the unit vector and we can see that px is equals to x squared y z and the py is equals to zero we don't have any y component or we don't have the unit vector and therefore the pz is simply equals to x z so now that we have we have we have that that is what brings us here so now if you want now to do different uh, partial uh, derivative of px uh, it is simply equals to d dx of of this which is uh, x squared y z so we are differentiating with respect to x and we know we the others are going to mean and untouched so when you differentiate with respect to x you're going to have two x y z and you have two x y z this is what you get right here then of course this becomes zero uh with with respect to to z z becomes one and therefore we have x coming right there and that is quite simple uh in the x coordinate uh or the cartesian coordinate system of course if you are to do it in the or uh, part b of that question that takes you through the or if the first thing you do is to identify that uh, q q has a raw a phi and a z and uh, those are the unit vectors of uh, the cylindrical coordinate system and uh, once you do that okay once you identify that you just do the 